This probably won't be my most exciting FileMaker 18 new features video. It's mostly just a bunch of slides. However, these minor enhancements to FileMaker sometimes have a major impact on how you develop a FileMaker solution. So stay tuned. And let's start with my favorite minor enhancement, the ability to nudge 10 points or 10 pixels at a time. You already had the ability to use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move it an object wherever you wanted to. Now you can move it 10 at a time. So if I just hit the arrow key once, you can see it just barely moves one point or one pixel. Throw in the shift key now, in whatever direction you're going, it's going to go 10 at a time. You can move it quite fast. And this is better than the mouse in sometimes because often when you grab the mouse, it will get off kilter. It might go horizontal or vertical, and you only want it to go one direction. And so just nudging something one point at a time can take a long time to get it across the screen. Now you can see that I can get it across the screen pretty quickly now. Let's go back into browse mode. We'll go on to the next new feature. FileMaker 18 now supports version specific URL schemes. If you're familiar with typing a URL into a web browser and opening up a FileMaker file, all you had to do was do fmp colon slash slash and then put in your IP address or domain name and then the name of the file. And you can include things like script names and things like that if you wanted them to run as well. Now there's the FMP 18 your old protocol. The only difference is, and both are supported still, the only difference is this one requires FileMaker 18 to open up. So that's great if you have a FileMaker 18 specific feature that you need to make sure is supported when that file opens up. Pretty simple and in the future you'll see other version specific FMP protocols for the next version and so on. They're going to keep doing this so that you can open any version of FileMaker you want. FileMaker 18 can now open a specific file on launch. I can't tell you how many times I've needed this. Users don't want to learn how to use FileMaker. They don't want to go up to the file menu and choose hosts and choose it or go to recent or I don't really want to make a launcher file. I just want them to be able to double click on FileMaker. It automatically opens up the one FileMaker file that I've designed for them. So this is great. All you have to do is go into the assisted installed text. I'll show you right now. And you'll see that there is a launch area. You just need to put in something like this, fmnet colon slash and then your domain name and IP address and your file name right in there. And when you install FileMaker, it's going to make that the default app and it automatically opens up. Now unfortunately there's no support for this feature in preferences. You can't go in there into preferences like you would with your startup scripts and things like that. Uh, we'll add some file options but you get the idea. And you can't go in there and, and have that you know specified after the fact. It has to be on install of FileMaker. That's my only uh, you know that's the only unfortunate part about it. I wish it was uh, a little bit more full featured. Okay, there is additional starter information inside the Create New. You simply go in here and say Create New. And you'll see in here now if you choose, let's say, Contacts, now they have the tables, layouts, and scripts listed. That's really all it is. They don't list it for the samples, just for these ones up here. I'm not really sure how useful this is, but I wanted to point it out. Uh, you know, you could create the template and see what was in there yourself. But anyhow, that's a change there. And FileMaker thought it was pretty important to include that information. So I'm going to, you know, convey it to you. The insert from URL script step has expanded its protocols. It now supports SMB and LDAP. So the complete list, you can see it right here now. Any protocol not in the above list will be rejected. So these are what's supported. So if you have your favorite type of protocol you want to have supported, you know, mention it on the FileMaker.com website as a feature enhancement. This is one of those things that people are going to be so excited about. FileMaker Go 18 now supports append in the save records as PDF script step. I've seen a lot of crazy workarounds out there. You don't have to do them anymore. It just supported, so that's great. You can append 
onto a PDF document. I use it all the time, or I shouldn't say all the time, but a fair amount of the time. And, and having my the support on FileMaker Go is great because I don't differentiate FileMaker Go and FileMaker Pro Advanced that much. Yes, there's different layouts, but as far as the scripts, I try to keep them the same. Now I can go ahead and have the same script do the same thing, whether you're on the go or at your desk. A lot of people are going to be up in arms about this. Peer-to-peer -peer sharing is now deprecated. That doesn't mean it's gone. It's still in FileMaker Pro 18 Advance, and it still supports five guests. It's just it's only recommended now for testing purposes. They will no longer further develop it. So it's still there and will still be there. I'm guessing it'll be gone when there's a file format change. And along with that will go the runtime engine, which has been deprecated for a while. So it makes sense. I mean, you know, FileMaker peer-to-peer -peer sharing really isn't nearly as good as FileMaker server. You shouldn't be using it because you don't have the ability to do backups while the file's live. What that leads to is people having to go to the server uh, or machine that they have FileMaker Pro as a host, quit the application, make the backup, launch it again, and that leads really to people not making backups, whereas FileMaker Server can do it automatically while the files are running. So it's really best, and FileMaker Server is not that much. I don't see this as a big issue. I, I would recommend not recommending for your clients to be using peer-to-peer -peer sharing. They should be using FileMaker Server, but it's up to you. I'm sure some people will still continue to use it, even though it's been deprecated. So apparently, there were a lot of complaints about the Photoshop image format being removed, and it's now reinstated. Simple as that. You can put a Photoshop directly into a container field in FileMaker. The snapshot link, well, they've changed the order in which it searches for files. In previous versions, it went to the network first and then the local hard drive. They switched that around because people who want to specify something locally apparently had to wait a long time, 10 or 15 seconds, for the timeout before it searched the local hard drive. Minor change, but it should help a lot. And if your files are on the network, it's so quick to search on the hard drive, you don't have to worry about any kind of difference in speed if you really are just looking for a networked file. Okay, new barcodes for FileMaker Go 18, PDF 417, ITF-14, Aztec data matrix. These are all now supported. I'm not going to go over what industries are good for and things like that. That's included in the article you see down here. There's a referenced article which goes into detail on these, but if you know data matrix, then you already know what it is and you'll be happy that it's there. There are also some additional barcode types that have previously been recognized using ZBar and now they're native. And you'll see them down here, code 39, code 93. It's really not going to change how they work. It's just going to make them native in the iOS for it. OK, FileMaker 18 has an application name change. It now doesn't just say FileMaker Pro Advanced. It says FileMaker Pro 18 Advanced when you double click on the icon in the operating system. It's a really small change, but I got to tell you, I'm really happy about it because now I can recognize what version of FileMaker Pro somebody's using without having to launch it and go to the about menu. It takes a while to, to tell somebody how to do that over GoToMeeting or over the phone. I just can look at it and see real quickly. Some of the functions have been reorganized, so if you look for them, they may be in a different place. Basically, the text function category was getting really, really large. So they took a lot of stuff out of there. They made the Japanese folder or group, JSON group, and miscellaneous group. And they also got rid of the summary group, which only had one function in it. So just a little reorganization, just a heads up in case you're looking for some functions you've used in the past. The data migration tool is the last thing here. And there's really not much changed about it. There's a couple of bug fixes in regards to container fields and indexes, but 
really the point I'm making here is that if you haven't used the data migration tool, you should start using it. It only costs $99 to get the FDS or FileMaker developer subscription. And it does so much more, uh, that subscription, than just give you the data migration tool. But for starters, the data migration tool is great because it allows you to move your data from a file that has data into a clone. So imagine you have two different versions. You want to get the data in there, you'd have to write scripts in the past. Now you can just put a couple lines of code in there and it moves every table, all the data over to the clone of the file. And that really makes it really easy uh, for uh, developers to uh, you know, get a file up and running because you know you don't want to take people down, uh, but you have to because if you're going to import the data, you have to get that old data into the new version. So this will really benefit people. And let me just show you the FDS subscription here. This is the FileMaker store, and you'll see here we don't need to select what country you are. It includes the FileMaker 17 developer subscription license for testing purposes only pre-release software, pretty cool, you can get ahead of the game there. The FileMaker Training Series Advanced, the iOS SDK, and then again, last but not least, the FileMaker Data Migration Tool. So great thing to have, a lot of people don't have it and don't realize that it's there. It's hard to find sometimes, now I've shown it to you, you've got a little button to get there if you need to, and I'd highly recommend that $99 per year just to get the Data Migration Tool.